for me, the revolution is over. I'm, I'm living my life, I'm living in, in an alternative culture. And I feel that the only successful way that the revolution ever can be over is for more and more people to just drop out and start living alternative lifestyles, start living on the land, out of the big cities, out of contact with the government, uh, away from the coercive agencies of government, police, uh, engineering boards, city planners, city governments, tax collectors. And it can be done. People can do it. We, we have hassles right here, but uh, we live a 100% less restricted life than the average citizen does and that we do as we want, the way we want it, and we feel our responsibility towards each and every person as a brother and as a sister, instead of as a law-abiding citizen. It is an experience type of thing. You don't attend classes. Living isn't all about attending classes. You live. We each learn from and teach each other. Everybody should try to develop at least one of the basic survival skills. Farming would be a very good one. Or hunting, building, mechanics, auto mechanics can be very helpful. You know, if they learn that, they won't have to be dependent on other people as much. We live in a community, and it's my feeling that everybody should live in small communities. Do we have enough people here? We have an engineer, an architect. We have some very good carpenters, a very good mechanic. We have some really great cooks, and we're trying to turn other people on to living outside of the course of society and to not being a consumer through the paper that we put out and just through personal contact with people. I feel that we could go back to uh, small craftsmen-like factories where perhaps a few people will work as craftsmen did, as blacksmiths did a hundred years ago. Such a shop with proper equipment could produce a tractor. It can be a tractor that uh, doesn't pollute. Well, the factories are driving the people to produce more simply for the sake of money, instead of to produce something that's really great. Uh, if, if people, you know, become skilled artisans again, something that's lost here in this country, the products will be much better. There will be fewer of them, but there won't have to be as many because they won't break as often. We, uh, we use technology here, building solar, solar heated uh, water heaters. That's what I did. I went around Europe and I found out what was going on. Uh, you know. And when I found out, it really freaked me out because where I was brought up, it just wasn't like that. It was a nice, closed community and it was protected and safe and uh, everything was all right and there was always enough food and nobody really, you know, ran around trying to get each other and stuff. So, then I came back to America, and I traveled around for a long time, about eight months, nine months. And I live in a lot of different cities. I live in I live at a lot of different colleges. I live, at, I live at Harvard, and I live in Berkeley, and that's about the two weirdest colleges. And I think I, I got into that a little bit, seeing when those guys were out, the smart people in the country, and I met a lot of the professors and stuff. Well, I still didn't think they were aware it's at because they were still out for like academic privileges and to get farther up in academic, you know. And the students were just liking to get in a good job still. You know, a lot of them were smoking dope and taking LSD and even taking heroin. It's funny that students at Harvard took heroin. So then I got myself on a commune in Canada and I lived there a couple months and just started experimenting with getting my true self out, you know what I mean? And experimenting with like not having to be paranoid about all the people and just working with a group of people, and I was about eight, and we were house painters. And then I thought the climate was too cold, and everybody I knew was a draft resistor, and I was wondering what was happening, but everybody was leaving, you know? So then I came back to America, and I started taking a lot of LSD, and the LSD was, uh, just completely blew me away. It just knocked my entire old basis out, and I had to, like, deal with this whole new reality I didn't understand. And it was, just, it was actually what I found out was, it was just the reality that everybody lives in all the time, and I was just alienated from it for like years and years and years. And it was a lot like waking up in a deep sleep. That sounds funny, but I think it happened. <laughs> yeah, it was a long, yeah, I do think it happened. Because I feel like it's been more refined, especially here at Heathcote. Like, uh, after a while, it was just too much. I think I went crazy for a short time. I stayed in my parents' house for two or three months, and I was in bed for a long time. 
And I was just completely shocked that, like, reality was this, this thing that we were, like, locked out of, and it scared the heck out of me. I couldn't understand, like, uh, why was it so hard to, to just be with oneself and to, like, live with people. It just didn't make any sense. So two and a half years ago, I came to Heathcote. And now I've uh, learned a little more how to relate to people and a little more how not to, like, behave in stylized dramas and just try to figure out, you know, that the world's not is far out. It's not really a horrible place. It's that the cities are horrible and the social system's horrible. The world, the world itself, is still really far out. It still works and still the light's still pretty and it's still far out. The reason that I left the city was because I, I felt like in order to break um, certain cultural patterns that I no longer want to be a part of, that I had to be in a healthy environment or an environment that had less um, conflict and that in order to become a healthier and whole p person that I had to be in an environment that was that was healthy and whole and, and so I moved to the country um, and since I've been here I've met other people who are um, in the same go who are looking in the same direction um, for instance uh, this farm uh, women here who have worked who've been in the city and who've come here and and um, are trying to live a full life in the country by having sheep and goats and um, uh, cats and chickens and stuff. All, all the way up Middle Ridge Road, um, there are people who come together for music and, and poetry and the people here, have people who've been here for any length of time have um, become more aware of, of the games that, from, that they've played in the city. And, and since they've been here, they've taught a lot of other people. And um, more and more, this, this whole area is becoming like a community of people who share things together. Like I buy milk here rather than buy it at the store. It's healthier. I know what they've, the animals have been fed. Um, we come together, and then we go, we go away and be, in, be by ourselves and to, to do our own growing as individuals. Um, most people are very poor. A lot of people have live without electricity, without running water, um, without, without all the main luxuries of life. Like, I don't, I don't have a toilet. You know, I go out into the woods. So that rather than my life becoming a habit, you know, of like going and switching on the electricity, um, I, Everything seems to be new. If I like go walk outside, you know, I look at the trees in a new way each day, and t slowly get away from patterns and habits which which only interfere with our lives and rather rather than make us whole people. I think the, the, the Vietnam War 
has kind of like pushed all of us to like make some stand and I think you know like our stand has been like a general strike our stand has been like to like to refuse to like support the society with with our skills and our tax money and our abilities and, and to try to go off in the bush where we are and try to build something that that that's more meaningful that that is more gentle that's more loving that's more peaceful something that like you know like we're not uh, afraid to bring our children up into. I myself have been arrested eight times in, you know, demonstrations, but, and you can just do that <laughs> for so long, you know, and, and then then you say, well, you know, here I am, and and I, I'm a young man, and, and, and what am I going to do with my life, you know? So one of the things that I tried to do with my life, one of my lives, was I, I decided to become a, a commercial success. I went on this incredible Horatio Alger trip, and I worked my way up, and I became executive, and I had the two cars and a house in the Berkeley Hills, and 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 I just could not l go on living with myself any longer. I mean, because even though I had all the things that money could buy, I had no life, and I couldn't sleep at night, and I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. You know, like the political lies are much easier to see through than than, than the social lies and the sexual lies. And a lot, of the, a lot of these are not, you know, like malicious lies. I mean, like I don't have any tremendous feeling of hostility really toward my parents or, or toward the straight society. It's just another level of consciousness. And in that particular level of consciousness, I mean, these people tried to do the best they could. But in, in a lot of ways, like we've been liberated from, from a lot of other problems that our parents have had. Well, one of the most important things in, in my in my father's upbringing was just to like, you know, like have enough to eat. But like everything else, exactly, our, our heads we're like much more advanced intellectually than we are actually physically. That I mean, like we are 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 talking the talk uh, a little bit more than we're walking the walk, and uh, we feel that by returning to the land and by harvesting our own food and building our own buildings and providing all the basic, as much as we possibly can of the basic necessities of life, that'll, pro that'll get us higher and return us more to the center and, and make us more independent of the machine. Uh, you know, like, uh, we're trying to build in our own stumbling, bumbling way a new society within the shell of the old. And I think one of the things that's obvious to all of us is that capitalism is just a really bankrupt economic system. It seemed to me in my life you have to have all the goodies that they like lure you into the society with, you know, like you have to in a sense first be a success in order to throw it all out because it's very hard to know whether you are a, uh, a bohemian or a misfit or a hippie or a dropout or an anarchist or a wobbly or a communist, it becomes very confusing whether you are in this particular spot because you are a misfit or too fit. At yeah. this point, the right. only, to the only choice really on seems to me in the United States is either survival from without or sabotage from within. I think the society has gotten to a point where that's the only two choices open for an honest man.
when I got here, like, Lama had already been here for five years, and I had to deal with a lot of establishment. Uh, we're our own establishment. We're kind of like the, in many ways, the aristocrat of communities. We have a bad reputation there. But people talk about getting high here. You become closer to God. You see that which is divine in yourself, and the way I do that is by uh, getting low, down to the mother. That's why I'm living inside of her now. Because I'm satisfied with this body, you know, and this life, and this earth. And I want to accept them fully. I don't want to get away from them. I don't want to get up there. I just want to be more fully where I am and what I am. Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe it's just a difference in approach, a difference in style. Maybe you get high or you get low or you don't get anywhere. I know that there's, there's nowhere to go. Uh, that if I stay right here on my spot and I just watch and I'm careful, that everything will come to me. Like all the nourishment of every kind that I need, all the lovers, all the teachers, all the food will come to me if I have that faith. And it's not a faith in anything. You know. It's just faith. It's faith in nothing, maybe. I'm kind of blind that way. Sometimes that takes a lot of concentrated energy just to keep awake, just to you know see what, what's living here on the mountain with you. you know. And I write it down in a book. You know, I, I try to be careful that way. And I see the things that grow here and the things that live here and I, I just want to know them in all the stages of their age and youth and birth and death you know the ones that live much longer than me and the ones that live just a few of my days and I don't have to go anywhere but all the same you know when I get off center I want to go you know the rest of this country I want to get on the interstate freeway just go you know try to make it different try to change it stay alive by finding something new. Yeah. So we're, uh, there are no enlightened beings here. Yeah. People get the wrong idea. They come up and they, they want something, you know? They want to change. And maybe, maybe we can help them do that. Even though, you know, we have nothing special. We have no monopoly on the light, whatever that is. As uh, someone came here once to see uh, someone who lives here, he'd come all the way from Chicago. He had heard about this guy, you know, and uh, you know he's just one of the people who's living here. He's uh, just like the rest of us, no one in particular. And he came all the way to sh from Chicago just to see him, and he came up to him and said, "Help me, you know, I'm in trouble." Uh, I want to change. I want to get out of those old ways. I want to be someone new. And this guy's first reaction was to say, well, you know, who am I? I can't help you. But the very fact that he had come expecting to be helped was enough so that uh, he could be helped. You know? He was ready for something, you know, to change. <laughs> going through a lot of very difficult changes. The family that formed the, the hub of this community uh, broke up last summer with a lot of pain and a lot of just the old, you know, rotten guts. You know, we certainly haven't gotten through that yet. We're, we're trying to learn how to live as a family. Uh, well, who do the children belong to? That's another one. Do the children have one mother and one father, or do they have 
all these mothers and all these fathers, and how far am I willing to go, you know, to take care of, of the children, you know, be aware of their lives, you know, even though they're not of my blood, maybe. You know. How far am I willing to go? I think that's really what it comes down to. I mean, how much of a family can we become? And right now, uh, it hurts a lot. People seem very much by themselves a lot of the time. And you break through that every once in a while, like it opens up and you can see right through, you can you know, see a, a brilliant light there, you know, which is what community can become, I think. I don't have any children myself. Uh, living here, I'm just starting to become aware of children's lives, you know, and maybe aware of the fact that we're all fathers and all orphans at the same time, and that uh, we've just got to take care of each other. Yeah.